anyway, uh, I got thing enough together and finally showed the first few things and we opened a small gallery and grabbed enough money together that we went overseas. $650, three children, the other two came, two cats and a dog, and my art materials and a new career. And I go to Spain where it's the end of the world. <laughs> uh -huh. Why Spain? Why, why, I have no why did idea. you decide to go? I think I'm Sephardic. I'm not sure, but uh -huh. I, I. Ever, so, so is your roots calling you? I. It was roots, really. It mm. had to do. It was also leaving America. Yeah. This was 1962, uh -huh. and lots of stuff was happening, um, and I just felt. And New York was fantastic. It's not that we didn't like New York, uh -huh. and the film business was fantastic. It just, I don't know, it was one of those guesses you make in life. Uh -huh. And she went along with me, and we got into Spain, and we spent 28 years there. Uh -huh. um, you, you said it was, um, it, it was also America. Uh, I mean, you, you had been um, very patriotic um, in, um, during the war, um, and, um, I mean, you put your, um, your life on the line many times for this country. W what changed between... Um, 1944 and 1962? Well, maybe it wasn't um, what changed. Yeah, well, I don't know in my individual feelings, but in the country, you went from not a highway to a whole highway system. You went from not a suburb to all suburban life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not putting it down in that sense, but for me it wasn't working. It wasn't being up in the mountains and we, I never thought to go back or anything. Mm -hmm. And I wanted something or other. I couldn't put it in words, there was no way. And I had a lot to work out. I mean, when you have, it's one thing to paint. When you have five mouths to feed and whatnot and Scott was one year old when we left. Uh, our daughter Siri was three, our older daughter was five, uh -huh. and the boys were 12 or 10 or 12 or yeah. nine or 10. And you didn't have much um, money in reserve. We had nothing. Nothing. We had nothing and no income coming in either. Yeah. Made it. That's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And it was magnificent. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we would have stayed forever. Uh, Where in Spain did you go? A uh, friend of mine that I had met in Figaro's had told me about the Costa del Sol. Mm -hmm. He said it's the last place on earth right now. It's sort of like um, um, Scott Fitzgerald and Hemingway's Cote d'Azur in the 1920s. It's its moment. If you, the co Costa Brava? Or co no. Co Costa no, del Sol? No, Costa del Sol. Costa Brava is out by Barcelona. This yeah. was a this, new this coast. Was south. And we went in, and there were no tourists. There were people like me who were floating in from here and there mm -hmm. and whatnot. But it was magnificent from the day we got there. All kinds of problems, obviously. Not speaking the language, not having any money. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But one way or the other, it worked. And who knew it began to bring tourists in? And for that reason, it also, I was able to sell things. Uh, and somebody actually came in and bought a good number of canvases, which... Uh, I went back to New York and opened a gallery on Madison Avenue across on the Whitney and then went back to Spain again. And that was the beginning of Hollander Galleries I, uh, all over. I, at any rate, uh, we stayed on the coast from 1962 to 1968. And then it was just too many tourists coming in. They were going to build an airport. Um, they were going to bring in big mm -hmm. planes. And we went inland and bought a very inexpensive piece of land on a bull ranch, and I built a house, also with no money. <laughs> <laughs> but in those days, lots of things could happen. You could trade and barter canvases, and there's, there's lots of ways to move. If you're healthy, you're in good shape. Yeah. And, and, um, and then you remained um, in this house that you built on the Bull Ranch um, until you came back to the States. From 19, yes, uh, we built in one year in 1968. Uh, and not only built it, but it was, the entire house was made. It was a reconstruction. There was nothing there before but rocks, mm -hmm. but a reconstruction in the sense that everything that went in the house came out of the 13th to the 16th century. 
because Spain was having a lot of tourists coming in, and they figured maybe we'll get out of the doldrums by serving our tourist industry, so they started destroying all the old buildings in the royal cities. And while they were destroying, I was trading canvases for what was in those old buildings. Oh, okay. So iron rejas, doors, roof tiles by the many, many thousand bricks by the 10,000 that were huh. made on people's thighs. Yeah. And we built our house out of it. And it was made how, ma how magnificent. Oh. Yeah. The, uh, and we, we've got a photograph I, of I that. Bought, I bought some photographs of it. Yeah. The place was called Cortijo de las Yeguas, which is house of the farmhouse of the mayors. And mayors, why? Because somewhere is when we were on the Costa del Sol with a daughter, two daughters, young. I rented a horse, one of them wanted the ride at five years old or six years old. So we rented a horse and that went well, so we rented another horse.